This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person. Today, I did something really nice, which is only have one cup of coffee. And normally, I have several. I have more than one, and I can't sleep, and my tummy is acidic-y, and it's sort of an acid reflux situation, but I did one this morning. Yesterday, I didn't do any. Seriously. And then today, I did one, (laughs) and that was tough. Yesterday, I fell asleep at 2 p.m. for 10 minutes in my office at Dry Guys. Don't tell them. And <laughs> don't tell him. And uh, I like fully fell asleep for 10 minutes. Ten. Cause I was just like, I cannot, cause I was doing no caffeine. And now anyway, the acid reflux situation has really got out of control. I'm he- sitting here with Sydney Raskind. So uh, n- no. Sydney Raskind. There it is. I'm sitting here with <laughs> Sid- Sydney Raskind, a friend of mine, the for guy years. Uh, for years at this point. The guy who doesn't know what you think I knew until my 30s. Hey. Sydney, thanks for joining the show. Thanks for having me, Miles. Yeah, um, yeah my last name has been a uh, a fun thing to say. Kind Ken for years. Yeah, so sure. every, but but hey, my sad card now is mm-hmm. kind. So it's kind. It's kind. Your sad card says kind. Yeah, that's important. A subtle hint that <laughs> this guy's in sag. <laughs> <laughs> subtle hint. In case you were wondering, um, he's sag. Yeah, he's after us. Uh, he's, he's both. Ad- <laughs> he's both. Well, again, thank you for having me. Yes, uh, this is. Uh, probably the biggest honor of my life. Uh, Sid, please. Is, ha- uh, is being on your podcast. Uh, please, Sid. Well, you know, obviously, uh, you're a TikTok creator. You're a YouTuber. I do that. I do you're, that you're, you're an yep. influencer. I am now. It's and, wild. And I have watched you over the course of our friendship get laid off, be wildly depressed, <laughs> and then be like, I'm just going to fucking, I'm so tired. It's like, have you have you heard the audio clip? Where this, it's uh, someone playing Call of Duty. And they just go, I'm tired of fucking losing. I'm, t- I'm fucking, we're not going to lose this one. And I watched you get laid off and then make a video every day until now you're yeah. famous, which is kind of really wild to it see. Is, that's actually the craziest <laughs> description of our friendship because that's exactly the time frame. It was like I was yeah. working. I, yeah, I was laid off. I was depressed for about 10 months. <laughs> right. And I started making TikToks yeah. and then I just kept going. Yeah. And that I'm here and you're just like I'm, I'm fucking t- done with that's this. that's honestly that's exactly what it was I was yeah. just like I was like I'm so over not being successful <laughs> like I'm just <laughs> over it like I need to succeed I need this yeah. I mean, fucking, and I did it and I was yeah. like dude it was it's been a crazy journey these past couple of years yeah it's a good case study like, it's yeah, a good case study it's just like Hey, like, just fucking do the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, don't worry about if it's like g- successful or not right away. Yeah. Just keep fucking doing it yeah. and hone it, and then eventually, like, you'll get better at it, and then you'll yeah. Dominate. I mean, the insanity of me wanting to be where I am now is yeah. like, oh, I look like a normal guy, but if I look a little bit less like a normal guy, that's then <laughs> maybe somebody will remember me more. <laughs> You were like, I'm like, you were like in an RPG. Yeah. You're like changing your costume. No, I was, I was, I was living Sims. Like I was, I, I was looking at let's myself. Try I was like, this. I was like, let's only wear tank tops in you every video. You did do video. that for a while. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wow, Sid's really got to look down for a little bit. I was like, I was like, hair can look bad. Yeah. Just uh, optimizing. Yeah. And like, I was like, just do the same thing every single day. That's like, kind of it. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah, please. Your personal TikTok account though. Yeah. Is incredible. That's very sweet of you. Like it. <laughs> I I know. That's another thing. I like posting, but I rarely fucking it's do it. It's so funny. Would you, was the Dua Lipa, what was that one where you were the, the audio producer for, it was the Dua Lipa song or something. Oh, it was for Cardi B. For Cardi B. That's what yeah, it was. That was like during the pandemic. Yeah. I made it one about Cardi B. And B's. you had more followers than me. And I was like, fucking miles. <laughs> but like I posted one <laughs> and one. it was just like, that was cool. And then two years went by. <laughs> yeah. Like I was an idiot. I was a fucking idiot. I should, and by the way, I remember saying to people, like I told like Keith or Zach or something. I was like, yeah, like I had this TikTok blow up and, and they were like, oh, so you like made a second one that was like, 
in the same <laughs> series, right? And I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Which like, obviously now, like, yeah, if I had made a second one, maybe that would have been cool. I don't know. Did they actually say that? Because yeah. that's it. Of course. Because they you, were just like, because well, you had the one do well. You should do a second right, one. That's like exactly. a similar format. So that's exactly what happened to me <laughs> yeah. since I had been in the business and, and been in digital for so long in so many different facets. Yeah. It was like, Okay, make a video every single day until you find your voice, until you find your thing. Got right. it. Good. TikTok, you create the meme because you are the meme immediately. It's so easy, right? Right. But then I made uh, something here, you know, here's something I didn't know until I was in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I just say, <laughs> I want that in my life now. <laughs> yeah, now that you have the power of that. Wait, so, okay. Yeah, go for it. I'm just going to, I'm just going <laughs> to. Pee Wee Herman test this really quick. Yeah, yeah. So if if I say, yeah, sure, here's something I wish I knew before I was in my 30s. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. The magical words <laughs> that that bought your house. Yeah, it was, it was like it was the. Cr oh my god, truly. Um, uh, Sid, I think you obviously proven why you're a perfect person, why you're on the show. Uh, oh yeah, that's your. That's true. Uh, you've proven that to the audience, <laughs> and now the people are calling in because they need our help. Oh my gosh. And so we've got to give them a call back. Now, obviously, Sid, thanks for doing the show. Absolutely. Uh, if you like the show, please consider rating and subscribing it. And if you love the show, we have a Patreon where we have extended ad-free episodes and a bonus show called Perfect Person Platinum where I get raw, Sid. Ooh. I give a master class on the things that people need to have perfection about. Wow. First dates, for one. Let's move on. <laughs> How to be a father coming up. <laughs> How to be a father will be coming up. <laughs> um, uh, all right. You can always call into the show by following the Instagram to get information on when we're taking calls. Sydney. Yes. Let's get into it. Hey, Miles. Um, this is Jay. Um, and I was wondering if you have any advice for someone who has a really funny boyfriend, but... I also don't laugh at all of his jokes. Like, we've been dating for eight years, and there are times where I feel like such a horrible person when he tries to make me laugh. How and many years? Eight. Totally eight. falls flat, um, and it's been happening pretty yeah. often. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's me being, like, stuck <laughs> up or, like, not <laughs> open to his humor. We both know what this is yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Been there. We've obviously been there. Oh my gosh. Oh, hello? Jay, you called perfect person, and I'm here to solve your life. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Yes, <laughs> I couldn't be more serious, and I couldn't be more jazzed to be solving your funny little boyfriend's problem. Now, I'm here with Sydney Raskind. Hello. How yeah, are you, You may Jay? know him from some... Here's something I didn't know until I was in my 30s. <laughs> On TikTok, <laughs> That's right. Instagram, and now YouTube. <laughs> That's right. Give him a follow. Okay, here we go, Jay. Tell us what's going on. Okay, so um, me and my partner have been together for about, like, Going on 10 years, um, oh. like high school sweetheart situation. Nice. Um, and he is a really, really, really talented actor. Like wow. one of the greatest performers I've ever seen, but also I might be a little biased. Um, that's actually how we met in high school. But mm -hmm. anyway, nice. he's a very goofy, like high energy type of guy. But I've come to find that, you know, he is all into this and he's really funny. And sometimes like... It just doesn't turn off. Oh, <laughs> um, oh you know, there are times where mm. I just cannot match the energy. And like, I always feel really bad that I can't like, I'll only play along until like a certain point. And then sometimes I can tell he like still wants to go or I don't know how to tell him like, you know, oh, like, man. I'm, no, I'm this, done. Yeah, like, that's the end of it. Jay, <laughs> Jay and then like, yeah, you called the right place because yeah. Sydney and I have both suffered from the same goofy boy affliction. So many years of goofy boy madness. Yeah, and I know what it's... I love it's, that term for it as well. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's an affliction. Disease. It's Cause, a disease. Because there's no getting out of it. You just got to get through it. No, it's it, your boyfriend's doing too many bits. Yeah, no, that's what I said. And he's yeah. doing too many bits. He's, he's trying to find his trying to find his five, his to, type five. Yeah, and, and, he, and he's using you as an audience member, and yeah. that is not what relationships are for. No, he's you know you're there to you're there to have silly uh, uh, real real bits real. Yeah life bits yeah oh look at this funny little egg that's great you know like <laughs> look at my little my toast but that's not fun. but not five or ten minutes of that yeah, no after the no. fact as well like 
Because what he's doing is mm-hmm. he's thinking about the egg. Yeah. He's thinking about the toast and yeah. then going, oh, man, what's the deal with crumbs? <laughs> yeah, what's the deal with crumbs? He's <laughs> you know? like, he's going, hmm, well, if crumbs in society and people would relate to right. an idea about crumbs being on stuff. And it, aren't crumbs like little, aren't they all? I mean, aren't crumbs like the government? And at right. that point, you need to stop right. him and say no. Right. No, bad dog. <laughs> you actually, Jake, can I be honest? It, the best thing that you could do yeah. is say, stop doing bits. Yeah. Or the best thing you can do is not laugh. Oh my God. Like, yeah. I know that that seems That's, like. But I've done that before. And how does he react? Is he is noticing? He is he noticing? He shouldn't be mad. <laughs> he, he never gets angry. He never gets mad, which is like also somewhat suspect because I'm like, how I would get, I just know myself and I would be so annoyed if someone didn't think I was being <laughs> oh funny. My but gosh, yeah. I think he's funny just a hundred percent of yeah. the time. And I've, I haven't said like, stop doing bits overall because I still want him to be like free. I want to balance like keeping it realistic. I'm sorry to say yeah. it's it's going to break you if you don't. If it's, you, don't. you know, like <laughs> you think that you're, yeah, yeah. You, think, you think you're being nice, but you're in a prison of bits yeah. at this point. And <laughs> like, I know what this is like, like I've dated improvisers. Oh I've been gosh. in that world. I was going to ask, did he, yeah. did he recently take a class? Oh, did no. he recently like do a stand up comedian course of yeah. some kind? Is he trying to like broaden his horizons as like an actor? Stand up. It's never, yeah, it's never really like intentional, like stand up bits. Yeah. So, like, oh again, gosh. like, in order for the longevity of your relationship, <laughs> you need to you need to confront this problem head on. Absolutely. And I think the way that you confront it head on is by doing two things: positive reinforcement, mm. which works wonders. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. here's what this is going to look like, Jay. When you have a really genuine moment with your partner, and he says something calm. Like, oh, yeah, it's calm, but like a little bit funny. I think that you want to be like, I love it when you're like witty and like, I love it when you do like witty, dry bits. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you want to like a Pavlov. But do I want dry bits? Though? No, That's you don't want I'm any like, bits. I don't want him to like. You don't want bits. So <laughs> my, you know what? I, I, I used yeah. to, I used to get angry at my now wife. Yeah. Who I love so much. Hey, sure. And I used to get mad. I was like, why aren't you reciprocating the bits with me? Yeah, no, yeah. They, n- You don't. And it's just like, it's yeah. because that's not what this relationship is. Yeah, exactly. That, that, your relationship is not an audience. Right. Your relationship is not comedian at audience <laughs> right. which or a comedian at camera. Yeah. Which I think that sometimes when you're young, you're like, and by the way, sometimes when two improvisers date, it's cam- oh it's, it's, co- it's like pr- comedian at no. camera, comedian at camera pointing at each other and and shooting each other down. Yep. And it's so much, and the yep. energy is so crazy. So, in, in anything, not dry bits, but maybe you can just be like, "Hey, I love that we had like a really like a, a really nice talk, like a genuine yeah. talk. Like I love to talk genuinely like that with you. Yeah. Like I think that like you want to reinforce that it's just like I sometimes I. And by the way, if he's doing too many bits, it's okay to just be like, "Oh, sometimes I just want you to be like my boyfriend, <laughs> not like." My, I mean, that's so harsh to he- say. I got a question. There's um, a world where you say that, but it's like that's that's nine one one. Here's what. Here's what. I was gonna say, even hearing that, I was like, whoa, that's. I know that would be that would be tough for me to hear. That'd be tough that, for me to hear. I think that this is hard too because <laughs> Miles and I have both overcome this part of our lives. Yeah, right. Definitely. <laughs> that's it's it's magical. Love yeah. it. It's, yeah. And we've we've had to grow as people to become perfect and people. What do you think made you overcome it? Me? Yeah. Therapy. It probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Um, therapy and just kind of like knowing that it's not the time. Yeah. One of the hardest things in my life I've ever done, Jay and Miles, uh-huh. is not making jokes during uh, my wedding. Sure. Yeah. Being like, this is an event that like, yeah. I'm, it's okay if I'm present for. Yeah. <laughs> the attention's already on me. Is your? Is, I don't need any more attention. I would also imagine that your partner's doing it because uh, he wants you to laugh like maybe he thinks that you love it and let's be honest jay have you been doing fake laughs and i want you to be real be with honest me. Uh, yes and some <laughs> for sure there are some we've definitely acknowledged out loud he's like okay and no you didn't think that was funny. yeah like, no see like, like yeah I'm like, I'm trying to give you something. 
<laughs> but like, does he have a literal notebook or is he just mental noting it? He's mental noting it, I'm sure. Yeah, but you don't like need sitting as he goes. Yeah, like, you nothing don't too framed. Like, <laughs> mm. you don't need to feel bad about yeah. not laughing at stuff. Exactly. And if anything, I think that a good, another good little one is if he does a bit and it makes you laugh, like genuinely enjoy it, enjoy the bit. And if he does one that doesn't make you laugh, it's okay to just be like. Ooh. Yeah. Like it's okay to if That's you're, actually you know, what got me, Kelsey would say, no notes, perfect. And I would just be like, oh, not okay. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> no, right. Like it. And they'd be like, yeah, flawless. Flawless fit. Yeah. Like I, I think, think that, so. I think I agree. There have been times where I have like he said something that was so hilarious and I've had to literally explicitly say, like, yeah that was funny. Yeah. Like that one right there was funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like noting I that get the, funny the positive ones. reinforcement of like when it's perfect. How long have they been doing this now? Um, cause we might, we might've been over the peak. You know what I mean? We might be going into the valley of like yeah. overcoming this affliction. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of been our whole relationship. So, oh. but now that we, cause we've been long distance for a long time. Yeah. Like, it's like, but now that we're spending like consistent time together, it's like, oh, wow. I didn't know how often these came up versus like me paying you a visit or something. That is, yeah, it's, it's definitely a younger person thing. Yeah. Cause I think the older you get, you're able to calm down a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what you know what I mean? Too. Like, I think that it's ultimately just like, it's also just that it's, cause I don't think that uh, it's like, like, it's obviously, it's just fun to do bits and you're like, I want this, I want this feeling all the time. Like you want to do it a lot. And I think it just comes with time and like that's... time allows you to calm down a little bit about it. And you're like, oh, like sometimes like, to me now, like restraint over comedy <laughs> stuff, like is the funnier thing yes. to not say anything for a while. And then say one thing is, has so much more power than like, what if I talked every second? Like, and I do you know, like a funny little bit every second. Jay, one of the best comedy notes I've ever gotten. Yeah. Was, was, was please stop. Was, yeah, was <laughs> you're not funny. Was, um, there's, uh, there's power in silence. Uh huh. Yeah. But I think that ultimately, like, it sounds like, yeah, the the positive reinforcement of uh, when it's really good, give give that give that feedback. And when it's not so good, you can go, yikes. Ugh. Like, but it's yeah. okay to, yeah. and, and then you can laugh about that. Like, Sarah and I, all the time, if someone does, like, a funny little voice or something, we are laughing at the failed attempt. Right. And, like, that can be very fun and bring you closer together. Yep. Because it's like acknowledging that like he's obviously trying to make you laugh because he cares about you. Mm -hmm. And so when there's an attempt that doesn't work, to be able to laugh at the failure is kind of great. Well, uh, Jay, how's that sound? What's your game plan? Do you feel good? That was so helpful. <laughs> um, feel very seen. Um, and that, yeah, that context from your guys' perspective like totally helps. So. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, Jay, um, uh, you get out there and hey, Hope the bits, uh, hope the, hope, hope, the, hope the storm of bits kind of ceases. Yeah. Uh, or are there, you know what? You don't want it, the bits to cease. You just want the downpour to become more of a trickle. Exactly. And, and you know, you got this. You got this. Amazing. Well, thank you guys so Th much. Thanks so much for calling in, Jay. You have a fantastic night. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we, I, I've definitely been there with the bits. That Jay. is so fun. Like, I think that Can I, I just it, say yeah, as an initial person to call, that was probably the most perfect person to call. Well, of course. That was I knew that incredible. you and I would both have first hand experience with that. <laughs> yeah. Like I I remember doing too many bits and then even like <laughs> I would know I would be like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. at my own behavior. Yeah. Like I'm like, yeah, but let it in my boom. Like, yeah, well that's but and it's like I all I'm doing is listening to comedy podcasts yeah. and doing bits. And it's yeah. like, wow. I need to like take a I need to fucking take a nap. Um, all right, Sid. All right, let's, let's do another one. Let's get to another call here. Hi, Miles. Uh my problem is that I I'm having issues with my landlady's son, Oof. and I'm wondering how I can get revenge but not revenge but like <laughs> let him know Long what a huge asshole he's been with while also like not pissing off my landlady uh i look forward to hearing your advice thanks bye long, that's incredible long okay con. a long con with the landlady's son sometimes i love it when the episode callers sound like um like old crime novels <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> disaster with the landlady's son long con Long con. Hello. Hello. Thank you for calling Perfect Person. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, we heard you had a problem and we're here to call you back and fix it. Yes. Uh, would you please let me know your name and what your problem is? 
Um, my name is Ronan, and my problem is that um, I, my, me and my roommate are moving out of our house because of a few reasons, and one of them is that my landlady's son is being super weird and a weird asshole. <laughs> it's a very strange situation that oh, I'm in. Oh, no. Does, does he live on the property? So, okay, so the, basically the situation is that uh, it's, it's such a wild story. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, yes. So, <laughs> so I moved into this house like two years ago. Uh, I was living in the basement portion of the house, um, and he, so and my landlady owns the house, and her son was living upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, he and his partner, who were living upstairs, moved out of the out of the city. So I moved upstairs, um, and then I think he and his partner were having some like personal problems or whatever. Like as soon as they moved, they kind of broke up, and I think he's been going through whatever. He comes back to the city. And like, kind of since then has been like, oh, hey, like, when are you guys thinking of moving out? Like, what's the situation? Both me and my roommate are in school. Um, and so we're like, yeah, like, we're going to finish at this time, um, you know, and then, you know, whatever. And so he's like, okay, cool. Uh, so like, we knew he wanted to move back in, but we were kind of under the assumption that it would be when both of us were done. Uh, yes. um, I I just finished school this semester. My roommate finishes next semester. And so we all assumed that we would mm-hmm. have until next semester to live in this house. Yeah. <laughs> next thing we know, in October, like a couple months ago, he comes in uh, and is like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, things are going great. Um, by the way, I need you guys to move out, like, right away. Uh-huh. Uh, and we're like, um, what? No, that's <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't out. He didn't outright say this, but it like very slowly became very clear in this conversation that he needed us, that he wanted us to move out. We're like, what? And we're like, is there a reason why? Like I'm finishing up in December. Like my roommate's finishing up in December. Like, why can't you wait? Uh, And he's like, I just want to move back in. We're like, nah, no, no, not a good enough reason, not a good enough reason <laughs> bud. Well, yeah, so, it was super weird. So do you have a month to month lease? Okay. Yeah. So that was the thing was like, I, well, and then I was like, I'm not doing anything in place for my landlady. And so we text her and she's like, basically she was out of the country actually on vacation. She's like a retired lady. Um, and she's like, Oh my gosh, like, let me go talk with him. Next thing. So we're like, Oh, thanks. She's going to, she's going to fix everything. And then she's like, no, actually I need you guys to leave like by December. And we're Uh. like, Oh my God. So I checked the, the, lease the contract um i'm we're basically just like renting this house from this lady who just owns this house you know it's like yeah um, not official yeah Mm -hmm. and so i checked the contract and it i'm like oh shit it doesn't say anything about like a date or anything exactly so it's kind of just like that's good for you though yeah that's good for you because tenants have well, well first of all how long have you been living there i have been living here for like Two years. Oh yeah, dude, you're, you're fucking so good. Sad. You're so good. You're dude. so sad. This is the thing. People oh think man, strap people in. Fucking strap in. <laughs> okay, strap in because you are fine. <laughs> Fuck these people. Do not worry about <laughs> this. Stay until you need to, yeah. and then leave. Yeah. Okay. Tenants have rights. Now, obviously, every state is different, and she, and this person is going to try yeah. to scare you, and your landlord's going to be like, "Yeah, I need you to move out." Whatever. No. No. Uh, we will not be moving out. You can give a fair date. Like, well, let's say, when do you want to move out? Yeah. So, well, and my, my situation kind of changed, but yeah, uh, where I'm, since I finished up and I, I actually have a job lined up, so I'm going to leave the state anyway, but my okay, roommate gotcha. feels oh, okay. like super screwed over because she still needs to stay for another semester. Okay. Gotcha. So you um, what your roommate should yeah. say, and obviously this is every state is different. But uh, and also we are not legal professionals. And we're not legal professionals, but I but, but I am <laughs> well, better than a lawyer because I know shit about all sorts of shit, <laughs> shit not just law. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> because I know about therapy too. Yeah, no, but um, so uh, generally in states, and actually this is a message to everybody who's afraid of their landlord. If you've been living at some place for a while, landlords can't just kick you out. Every yeah. state is fucking different. But like landlords want you to think that they are uh, like cops, right? And they're not. Right. They like like in right. or, in order for a landlord to evict you properly, it is really expensive. Yep. It costs time. It costs like you know they might have to go to court. All this shit. What is a way better situation is that it, everything is all copacetic and that you do what they say. Right. So if you don't do what they say, you can kind of haggle it a little bit and figure out a situation that works for you. Right. Um, in this situation, for next time, uh, no. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, that's not what we had agreed upon. You're giving me no notice. 
Yeah. Uh, I think that 60 yeah. days notice is fair. I, you probably already paid maybe first or last month's rent. You know, you can uh, negotiate these things to be whatever they can. But like for somebody like that who talks to you that way, just be like, okay, cool. Um, I will give you a horrible review yeah. if you are telling me that I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. Like you are forcing us out right. of our house. Like there are a lot of ways. Like it's, Also like the thing is like they need you more than you need. Like, you know what 100%. I mean? Like you're paying their yeah, mortgage. Yeah. yeah. He wants to take away money from the landlord. Yeah. And also if you're working with a landlord and this fucking dumbass son comes in, <laughs> yeah. don't talk to the son at all. <laughs> If the sun even talks, no, yeah, that's what I'm like. I get out of my house. I'm gonna text the landlord because you don't tell me what to do. And then it kind of turns out. Then it then it seemed like that she was on his side, and we're like, what the fuck. Well, because um, but that but yeah. that has nothing that to do. Yeah, yeah. That has nothing to do with you. You can tell her if you have another tenant that needs to move in. That is fully your problem and not my issue. But I have signed a contract yeah. with you, and I am in business with you. You know, yeah. obviously, it's all said and done because you're moving out, and now you need revenge. Right. And yeah. this is what we're about to give you. Right. Yeah. Tell me about the type of revenge you want. So, I, so <laughs> first of all, I do just want to say that, like, yeah, Miles and I are so ready to go to bat for you. Yeah, I'm ready to go to... I'm ready, <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to fucking keep this guy's car. Yeah. Okay? You tell me his license plate number, and I'm there. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my God. No, yeah, yeah. So, like, definitely I agree with you. Like, the the whole, like, legal... Like, if we had... I mean, I don't know. Like, and I think... We're, we're in Utah, and I think Utah kind of has shitty sure. renters, right? No, that's right. Um, California's really good about that Cat, stuff, and so I know spoiled. not every state is. We're so spoiled here. yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think it, it basically it's like said and done. We're we've basically we're moving sure. out already. But yeah. yeah, so the landlord's son. So all is, of that stuff we just like, told you is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Our passion but, was wasted. So, okay. Go on. The thing is, is that he like when he was living upstairs and I was in the basement. He seemed like a really cool dude. He's like this kind of cowboy punk dude. Uh, like seems really chill. He's like into like social justice stuff. And I was like, Oh, this dude's like really awesome. Like he's kind of cool. Like we mm. were like, not really friends, but like, yeah. you know, kind of hung out, but like, so I was like, Oh, this dude's cool. And so when he came in was like, I need you guys to leave right now because I just want to move in. You know, we were like totally blindsided. We're like, what the fuck? That's like I thought insane. this guy was yeah. cool. And like, thought he was and like part of now he's like throwing yeah. us into the street. We're in the way in his way, basically. That's, really so that's like part of why, yeah, it was so, part of why we're like, what the hell? Like, if he had been an asshole from the beginning, it would have been one thing, but like... No, I think actually what hurts more, what hurts more for people like this, obviously this person was an asshole. And in a lot of ways, like, we don't want you to do a crime. In, <laughs> in a lot right. of ways. Not in all ways. In, in a lot, lot of ways. In a lot of them, we don't want, it, you, to yeah. want, you, we to don't want you to do a crime. But um, I right. find that sometimes with people who are real assholes, uh, genuinely giving them your disappointment in a way that is digestible mm. can be the meanest thing you could possibly do. Yeah. I'm going to tell a story yeah. one time now. Um, okay. I went to a coffee shop and this is, <laughs> I'm one of the best coffee shops in LA. And, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't no. finish my sentence. <laughs> no, I mean, this is in North Carolina, right? I'm from North Carolina. I was home visiting my friends and um, I was home visiting my family rather. And I was working at a coffee shop in New York City. Again, I'm like fucking just, I'm a coffee shop guy. Working yeah. at a coffee shop in New York City, go home. I'm like, ooh, this is a cool new coffee shop. Let me go in my yes. hometown. Sure. Go to the hometown coffee shop and I go uh, up the counter. There's some fucking guy working <laughs> behind the counter and I go, Hey, how's it going? I'm by the way, I, I'm, I'm very sweet to, you know, good baristas, stuff like that because I worked in those jobs. And at the time yeah. I was working at a coffee shop. So I was like, yeah, great. I was like, Hey, how's it going? Like, um, Oh, this is a cool new coffee shop. Like how long have you been here? And he was like, Oh, whatever. And, uh, he was in a bad mood. And I was like, um, can I get a, uh, iced espresso? And he goes, no. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, I was like, Oh, wh what do you, what do you mean? And he was like, um, we don't do that here. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, um, I was like, oh, are you sure? Sorry, like, I, you guys do iced Americanos, right? Like, can you just do like, because I was like, in my mind, I'm like, maybe his cash register only has buttons for certain shit. So I was like, oh, well, could you do an iced Americano and then just like, don't, like, I don't need water. Yeah. You can just do the ice. <laughs> and he goes, no, we don't do that. Like, I, he's like, no, I won't make that. Like, that's going to make your espresso taste bad. And, like, it's going to shock the espresso. It's going to be bitter, whatever. And, by the way, I worked at a coffee shop for fucking years. And if that is true, yeah. I don't give a shit. Yeah, right. I wanted, a, I wanted the power of the espresso, yeah. the deep flavor, yeah. but I wanted it to be iced. It was a hot fucking day. It's yeah. North Carolina. So I was like, I wanted iced espresso. 
And he he was like, <laughs> so I was literally like, oh, can you do like an ice I'm, I'm like trying to bargain with him, smiling, being whatever. And he goes, no, we we don't do that. Like I, I cannot do that for you. Like he didn't have any ice. He started getting mad at me. He started wow. being mad at me for oh asking for an ice espresso, right? And I was like, um, uh, okay, like I, I was like, are you sh-? like in my mind? I'm just so confused because I'm like, but like. You're, it's just about the water. So I was like, can you do a short iced Americano? But like, so sh- I was just like, it's confused. And I'm like trying to, I'm being very sweet. And I'm just like, hey, oh, like, would it be okay if, can I get an espresso and then a cup of ice? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm trying, <laughs> like I'm he's not going to know. Right? I'm trying to figure this shit out. And he's like, he's just like, ugh, like, n- like, fa- like, whatever, fine. He's like mad at me. <laughs> And by the way, he didn't own the fucking store. He right. just works right. there. He's, He's just like a guy. Yeah. Like, and it made me so mad because I was like, what the fuck does it matter to you? <laughs> like, I'm not asking you to like take the, the take the fucking ribeye right. and put ranch on it. Right. I'm asking for a cup of ice and an yeah. espresso. Yeah. And he goes, what I do with that is my business. Yes, exactly. And by the way, the level of irate that I'm being here, I assure you that I was like in the person, I was like, like, I was like, I was like sh- shaking. Can I? Can I say? I have, <laughs> like yeah. shaking because I was nervous. We've been friends for a long time. <laughs> I have never seen you this bad. <laughs> because I it fucking sh- and I was like, it, it, you know, like how like when when a, a when a bad confrontation goes, like oh, at least for gosh. me, like I kind of like like my lip kind of quivers, <laughs> which like is so invulnerable yeah. and like it makes me feel like I'm, I'm like I'm just like yeah. Yeah, no, okay. Uh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. I'm it like upset me deeply. And so I'm like sitting right. there upset. And oh um gosh. so he was just a guy that took a coffee class. He was a guy who was a barista there and <laughs> so then he gives me the espresso and the ice. Mm-hmm. And I take it and I go sit outside. And I'm like so upset by this that I'm like I can't leave. <laughs> I cannot leave. And like I get I go through the I go through the fucking range of emotions. I get livid yeah. and 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 then I soften and I yeah. go that's not going to, if I go in there and I, and I'm mad at this guy and I show that I'm angry, that is not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. He's just going to be like, fuck you. And like, he's already a dickhead. Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. dickheads don't yeah. like being respond, you know, people being mad at them. So I, I tried to soften and I was like, okay, let me put myself in his, his shoes. How, if I did something like this, I would never fucking, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, first <laughs> right. of all, cause this guy's the scum of the earth. It, if you're, first of all, if, if you're a person that walks into a coffee shop yeah. and asks for an iced espresso, yeah, sure. you have been drinking coffee so long yeah, you that you ju- don't yeah, right. care. Yeah, or at the very least, you are <laughs> also, like, like, that's I'm, not like I'm going to throw, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to throw something out here. Was it like four in the afternoon when you eat? No. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like two in the afternoon. Yeah. It, was slow, but it, was, it was slow. Yeah. yeah. No one else was in there too. Like it was, yeah. he didn't have a line. Yeah. It was just me. And so I, w- I was like, I saw it. And then eventually he comes outside to like, gra- he's grabbing a dish off a thing. And so I, and by the way, I'm like, my like heart's beating quickly. Cause I, like, what I'm about to do, up. What, I'm getting, I'm like psyching myself up. The espresso fucking hit me like a train. Yeah. And I go, um, I was like, hey, hey excuse me. Can, can I talk to you for a second? Like I, I like, I oh, was like, wow. can, can I talk to you for a second? Because I was just like, it really upset me. And it also was my hometown, which kind of like was shitty. I was like, I let, I'm like, you're treating me like I'm some schmuck. And I like yeah, am from like- this town. And so I, what I said yeah. to him was, I go, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Um, that like, I felt like you were really like not cool, cool to me in there. I I just felt like, and I, my heart was beating and I was kind of quivering and I just was oh, like, wow. I was just like, that like really is not okay. Like I, I'm from this town. I, I also work at a coffee shop and I, and I just feel like, I don't know that, that, that really was upsetting to me. And I felt like, um, it was really disrespectful. Wow. And so I said this to him and in the way that I said it, he was like, he like felt bad. Yeah. He felt bad yeah. and was like, yeah, yeah. I, I, he, and he was like, I'm really sorry. Um, that's, he's like, that's something I'm working on. Like he said that, wow. to me, which I was like, if oh I God. come in mad to this, he would not have, he would sure. have been like, whatever. Sure. Like, but because I was just like, look, like I. Yeah. Or like vindicated, like oh, another shitty customer. Yeah, whatever. exactly. But because I was just like, look, like yeah. I, I don't, I, that's not okay to, t- to talk to me like that, you know? Uh, and, and he was just like, that's something I'm working on. And I was like, yeah, like I, I am from here, you know, whatever. Like I work at a coffee shop. I know like the roast and hit the roastery that the coffee shop was like was in New York and whatever. And he goes, yeah, like I, I'm really sorry. I think I just have like a uh, weird baggage around because our boss told us 
not to do it or something like what? a couple months ago. And so I didn't, I just felt like, and I passed that on to you and he was like, and I'm sorry. And I was just like, yeah, no, I get that. Like, it's cool. Whoa. I get it. Everyone has those days. Um, but, uh, but I appreciate your, your apology. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, yeah, great. So and smart. then he went inside and, and then I went to my car um, seething. No, I was at the, I was fine after that. <laughs> like, cause I was just like, I need to, I was like, it was the trolley problem. Yeah. This guy was going to yeah. run over a grou- another group of people. Sure. And I was just like, I feel like I have to do something here. And if I come in aggro, it's just going to do nothing. Right. So anyway, that yeah. was a long winded way to say, don't go in <laughs> aggro. Yeah. Approach this guy and be the best you that you can possibly be. And if he's still an asshole after that, then he's going to hell. And yep. he's fucking burning, baby. Burning. Fuck this guy. Yeah. If you approach this guy with empathy and he still sucks, he can eat shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually yeah. very true. Yeah. Niceness. See, I, I was I was gonna say, yeah. um, you know, leave leave something not smelling nice yeah. in a vent. <laughs> Fish. Yeah. <laughs> fish. Alternatively, leave a fish in the house when you leave. <laughs> yeah. So he something. smells it. Yeah. Or, or two things can be true. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You I can, can approach him with empathy. Yeah. Approach him with yeah. empathy. He's like, yeah. You guys have like a really heart to heart moment, and then you leave a tuna. Yeah. In the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fish in the <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so you're like, I got mine both or, ways. Or, or <laughs> yeah. you said you said to live in Utah, so maybe you encounter snow a lot. So like maybe just take all the shovels. Yeah. There you go. No you know snow I mean? shovels anymore. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. You don't need them. Just turn off the air conditioner on like a <laughs> fundamental level. Yeah. <laughs> turn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Turn off. Turn off the heat. Um, yeah, exactly. The house is freezing now. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you know. I mean. I think approaching it with nice is being very sincere. Mm-hmm. You know. You do it that way, and just like if you were friends with them or you thought you were, and now it's like, wait a second. I thought you believed in social justice, right? So. What you're actually saying is... So here's a little social justice. You punch yeah, him in the face. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, so, yeah. I mean, I think Miles is right. I think you should go in, yeah. try to be nice, mm-hmm. uh, and just don't tell him about the fish you left in the exactly. air conditioning. Yeah. Super yeah. super simple. Yeah. Um. Well, I hope that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I will do exactly that. Um. I think that is something my therapist would advise. I think yes. those are true. Um, I don't... Yeah. I will be nice to him and also leave something nasty yeah but i didn't, <laughs> don't don't tell him that we gave you that because yeah, we don't didn't tell actually us. have yes oh, um don't tell, tell him it was us because yeah. um we don't want him to get mad at us and scary yeah, yeah. um because i still want to live there because <laughs> i want to i'm actually i'm moving into your old house <laughs> oh god <laughs> and i don't want you to be mad at me <laughs> um yeah well thank you so much for calling in you have a fantastic evening yeah thank you you too thanks for calling me back <laughs> of course have a good one bye bye Oh, bada man. bing. Can I just say this podcast is fantastic. That's very sweet of you. This is a fantastic <laughs> podcast. I can't I can't imagine a more fun setting. That's very nice. Thank That's you. like it's just it. so hilarious to think like <laughs> also if I was getting a call back from someone that I truly truly like <laughs> admired like like <laughs> I would just be like, "Oh, um <laughs> hi." <laughs> well, it's just funny cuz too cuz like I yeah, like it's fun to get into people's lives in that way. Yeah, it's like so intimate I, in this really kind of I don't know. I don't know another podcast that does it where they're just like, "Hey, listen, like we're gonna call you back and hope you got time." <laughs> yeah, well, I consider myself um, the poor man's Ira Glass. Yeah, right. So that's kind <laughs> of the level of storytelling that I'm doing here. Um, yeah, man, but I I do think that's so true. By the way, like I, I have so many experiences where. Yeah. I felt so mad. Yep. And I just was like, if I go in there like a fucking bull, yeah. no one's going to, like, it's not going to, that person is going to forget about me or be like, that guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, even if you're wronged, if you go in as aggro as the person who's wronging you, you're just like never going to get any traction. Yeah. And by the way, you might not get any traction by being empathetic. Yeah. But at least you know that you haven't like, put shit into the world also like if you're already if if like you're gonna pass this you know what honestly that person is probably going to avoid the situation as much as possible now because they know they're wrong yeah right? exactly right yeah so it's like even even going into the situation and just being like yeah if i see him like that sucks like that that really sucked what you yeah, did like, right we weren't ready we didn't have any time and now what do we do like yeah. that cut sucks and and 
I, I'm sure that they will feel they already feel bad. Yeah, probably, and they'll right. just feel worse, and that's just that's just what it is. That's just I, what it is. It I sucks. Guess, yeah, I think it's just like people are not prepared to be empathized with. Yeah. And by the way, when I say empathize, I just mean like people are not prepared to be genuinely spoken to. Yeah. Because a lot of people just don't know how to communicate. Yeah. And they communicate in these sort of ways that were taught in movies, which is just like, hey, asshole, you fucking <laughs> like close your door near my car. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, yeah, well, you're the asshole. Because you don't know, like everyone's trying to one up each other. And it's just like, that's not going to have any sort of growth. I've been in uh, two situations that remind me of this. And I was riding my bicycle mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I hit a car that was turning in, <gasps> into a parking lot. Yeah. And, you know, obviously I'm mad at myself, but I was just like, oh God, like, is everyone else okay? Yeah. And so the person that walked out of the car was like about to be so mad. And then yeah. I was just like, hey, are, are you like, is everyone okay? Yeah. And then that happened again. I was rear-ended mm -hmm. uh, in my car. And the first thing I did was like, hey, are you okay? And like, I was just like, I, like, like no, I'm not mad. No one's yeah. mad. We're okay. You're okay. Yeah. And it really softened the situation. Of course, it's so difficult to do. Yeah, it's but it's, it's tough. just because also like you're probably never going to see this person again. No. It's going to be a story of that one time I was kicked out, and yeah. he was an asshole. No, exactly. Because so. like uh, yeah, it's just people are you know we're so wired. I think to um yeah literally movies and television like what i said before like yep. what you see working in like popular culture is um people being like oh yeah fuck you like right. the guy standing up at a bar and being like oh yeah like what the fuck are you going to do about it yeah. and it's like no like that doesn't work in real life <laughs> yeah. like it just doesn't and if it does then that's a situation that i never want to be in i also love <laughs> how um on board with fuck this landlord situation we were. Obviously. Because I'm sure like you and I have been in so many situations where it's just like, yeah. no, no, no. Then you realize that you have the power yeah. and it's just like, it makes life so much easier. No, <laughs> for sure. It's also just like when you like, you watch a lot of like crime television. Yeah. You're like, well, they're going to get the cops. Right. They're going to arrest me for not paying rent. Right. And it's like, do you think that the cops. Also, what thing that. Fucking yeah. have, like are going to. You think that the cops, one of the worst institutions <laughs> yeah. in this country. Give a is like, shit. Give a shit about <laughs> you being evicted. Yeah. They're too right. busy like fucking up marginalized people. <laughs> yeah, right. They don't have time to care about like, your like, you know. Like yeah. though, like. And also something to, it's kind of like getting fired, right? Yeah. Do you know how much harder it is to it's get so hard fired? To fire someone. And to, to get to fire someone and find a new person to it do your job yeah. than to just if sit you're, with like, it. Like with the caveat of, <laughs> yeah, if you're like basically competent, you know, like if yeah. you're like basically intelligent, yeah. then it's so difficult to fire yeah. someone. Before, before we uh, started recording, you were talking about how <laughs> I was fired and laid off from a job. Yeah. I was I, like, so many times I should have been fired, but they were just like, they were just like, ah, listen, he's, he's not bad. Yeah. Like, what are we going to do? We're going to do. <laughs> so it's also like, if you're charming enough, you're exactly, not going to fucking get fired. Exactly. And it's like, if you're charming enough, they're not going to do anything. Yeah. That's how miles and I have kept every kind, job. Literally kind of, <laughs> I mean, like I, I feel, I do feel like I'm talented in a lot of ways, but I sure. feel like if I was talented and a dickhead, yeah, I've worked on sets before <laughs> where it's like, it it's just so crazy how one person's attitude can destroy so much. Yeah. You think that son will never run into them again, right? Like we're never going to have oh, to but, deal with it. Oh, but then all of a sudden you meet one person yeah. that actually knows that person. They're like, Oh yeah, they're total dicks. It's like, I know. Yeah. So it's like you, it's amazing. And that's also, it's amazing how small this town is yeah. for in Los Angeles where we're just like, Oh, it's small. Like when we met each other yeah. and you were like, Oh, you knew that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Great. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, wait, you know, oh, we were, oh, oh my God. Literally over the course of our, five, you know, four years of friendship, five years of friendship, um, literally two people, Kelsey Dara and Eric Striffler, oh, yeah. people that I've been friends of mine for a while, like have run into you at parties of mine and been like, I've known Sid for like seven years. Yeah, or more. Or more. I've known Eric yeah. for a long time which is crazy <laughs> like i was just like what do you mean like that's happened twice and it's been very funny yeah. some. but like i think in la especially it's yeah. a nice reminder to be like even in this situation you know let's take the, the situation uh someone's aggro to you at work and uh if you aggro back at them they're gonna have a bad taste in your mouth whether or not they wronged you or you wronged them or whatever it doesn't matter yep in this town 
I have seen people get wronged by celebrities and then those people who were like assistants or whatever become showrunners. Yeah, exactly. And like that stuff ha for real happens here. Yeah. And it's like, you can't be, that happens everywhere. But I yeah. think in LA, it's just like mag magnified because of celebrity and because of like the, the, the attention, media attention around that kind of stuff. Yep. And there are people that like, have fucking wronged me <laughs> and I will never like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I will never forget. Me it. too. I mean, I, the, like where I am, <laughs> where I am now. Names. People. <laughs> yeah. That's I've so, got names. Yeah. I got, I got so many people that were just complete dicks. Yeah. And now I'm just like, all right, let's yeah. see what happens. And I'll and, tell you, it's the people who are pretending like that's not. What yeah, they exactly. <laughs> and now, now working with like bigger audiences and brands and stuff, sure. You know, you, you being a real true professional with this, I'm running into people inside this industry that mm -hmm. I would have never met before. Yeah. That know people that I know and have worked with. Yeah. And because you're nice, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, fantastic. Like, I don't have to, like, this is going to be a great conversation. Yeah. You know, no, like, right. this is, so it, like, being nice is so much, it's harder but it, on the long run, yeah, five harder. years down the line, man, it's going to pay off. Yeah. Because you want to have like your anime moment. Yeah. <laughs> where you power up and like, you're one punch. Hey, get away from me. Yeah. But then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then never, never, ever works. Well, Sid, <laughs> that brings us to the final segment of the show. Arms going in the air. That brings us to the final segment of our show, a segment that we like to call Get Real. It's a segment where we force a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. You're already oh crying. God. <laughs> I'm so unbelievably uncomfortable. So, but, but I am. I'm crying yeah. already because this music is amazing. That's right. Um, now, uh, I talk a lot about uh, this. <laughs> this segment is my favorite. Um, I talk a lot about this show about uh, about grief. Oh, and one of the first things that uh, you and I oh, realized man. that we had in common yes. was uh, we're both very familiar with grief. Super familiar. You Super and your brother. Yeah, me, me, my brother, mm -hmm. and, and my, my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was wondering for you, is there anything new? In that journey for you, I mean, obviously, wow. especially with success and, and your child and stuff sure, like that. Yep. Um, how have you been uh, affected by that grief in the modern day? Wow, excellent question. Um, <laughs> this music. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so I do have very. I have a lot of grief in my life. Yeah. Parents, mm -hmm. uh, both my parents, my father-in-law, my my grandmother. Um, you know, a lot of people. Um, I think that this holiday season is actually difficult because my daughter is here now. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I want, I want that moment with her to be special. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a real thing. Did you write this? Did you no, write this? This is not me on the piano, <laughs> but I wish. <laughs> no, it's true. Grief is, uh, grief is a wild thing. I think that you sort of, um, it is so utterly sincere what we're saying to each other yeah. right now. Yeah, for sure. But <laughs> to actually have the soundtrack That's gorgeous. is beautiful. Poetry. Um, yeah, I think that now with, yeah, with my success and everything, I'm, I miss, I miss them more. Yeah. Of I course. want them to experience this crazy, amazing thing in my life yeah. and, um, to just see it. And now that they can't, it's really, really difficult. It's really difficult, but you know, I think it's, it's unfortunately part of it. Of so, course. Yeah. So, well, I think that like in a, yeah, no, I think about that all the time. I mean, my, um, I just shot a short film that, um, was kind of inspired by the passing of my best friend, Marnie. Uh -huh. And, uh, it, there was a like element of, a, I, I, I got to think about her a lot and the writing of that and the shooting of that. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And there was an element where I was just like, oh, fuck, man. I wish I, I, you could see it. You yeah. know, like, I, I really wish you could see it. And obviously, that's such a, 
Um, like, yeah. It, you know, it's just one of those thoughts that you, you have. But Well, then you also want them to see that you've grown. Yeah. Right? I'm That's like, a big part I'm of I'm like, it. man, you would like... You would be think like some of the stuff I'm I'm doing right now is obviously inspired by yeah. my love for them yeah. and uh, and also my ability to be like I f- I can fly free and I'm not bur- burdened by illness or burdened right. by death like I'm able to do these things so yeah uh, I mean you become a very strong person and you want them to uh, be a part of that journey with you and just like just like knowing that you you know like you and I have changed as people mm-hmm. since their passings yeah. It's just sort of like, man, you would have lost your fucking mind yeah, to see this. For sure. This is crazy. I and I the, think that's... That's wild. And the holidays, is just like, you know, I'm lighting the Hanukkah candles or, yeah. I'm, you know, or I'm like, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, oh, man, like, oh, you would have loved this. Look at this house. No, you know? totally. My gosh. Dude. Well, I, and I feel the same way about... Um, your wedding must have been so. Yeah, no, of course. That the wedding was uh, yeah. was big for me, and um, I think also the birth of my uh, child will be that way for me too. Yep. Where, um, <laughs> uh, where I think that like, uh, well, and my and my son's name includes my brother's name. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you after we stop recording. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it does, and uh, it's his middle name. Oh, got and it. And so I think that, like. It's obviously going to remind me of childhood, having yeah. a, a young son yeah. and be like, oh, like, you know, like, I think it's going to bring up a lot of that stuff. And yeah. it's just a reminder of how it's kind of always with you. Like, yeah, it doesn't and leave anyway. Ever. Also, it's it's interesting because uh, you realize how life and death works yeah. once you have a kid. Totally. Yeah, that's and interesting. It is it is truly like, oh, now it's, it's your time. Mm-hmm. And you're just like... Man, you just you, you yeah, you look at that kid and you're just like, all right, well, now it's next. Yeah, it's so it's yeah, it's a crazy thing. That's really and it'll wild. hit you when you're like changing a diaper at two in the morning and you're yeah. just exhausted. I'm uh I'm on the verge as I'm were. excited. I'm excited for our kids to be you know, around the same age. To- I mean literally the same like, age. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> very close in like, age. No, that's crazy. Yeah, that'll be yeah. really fun. You know? And yeah, it's just like, you know, sitting in the room with them and you know, you just kind of have like, it's a reinvigoration of grief, but it's also like a understanding that like, okay, now we're on to the next thing. And mm-hmm. you ever seen the movie About Time? It's one of my favorite movies. Fantastic of, film. Of all time. Of all time. Uh, T- truly. Everyone should and love that And I think that, that like everyone who's like, I love at Love Actually. And I'm like, yeah, Love Actually is great. Have you seen his better film have you seen, about time yeah have, i love it love actually but i'm like about time is it makes me so good fucking cry but when you so realize good. you can't go back in time because oh, your your kids here dude that's it <laughs> oh man i'm telling you that movie will get you going <laughs> holy shit yeah that's a that's if you if you're uh listening to this and you're looking for a movie to watch on you know you got to get into it it's so it good i can't watch it anymore because no, that it, part would be brutal. Yeah, I I just, I love it so much, and I'm just like, if I watch this movie, I'm screwed. Something I think I'm getting chills. Something that I think about <laughs> that I think about, um, uh, like kind of on the daily. Yeah, <clears throat> is something that me and Sarah that say this to each other all the time. In that movie, he's a quote. It's a great movie. This isn't a spoiler, really. But he uh, there's like a time also tra- you should watch the movie. You should watch movies. Yeah, there's a, definitely watch a movie. There's a time travel element to it, and uh, and he's like, uh, you know. He's at first, there's a part of the movie where he's going back in time and to relive the same day twice yep. to notice all the things that he missed. Yep. And then uh, he does that for a little bit and then he realizes, well, instead of doing that, I'm going to live every day for the first time like it's the second time I've done it. Oh, yeah. So I, every day I'm looking around and I'm going, wow, look at all like look at all these details I missed around the first time. Oh, yeah. And you're like, look at, you know, this soda can. Look at like the air, the stillness, like figuring out how to live your life in a way where you're looking around in wonderment um, of all the things that are possible. The, and I think that's a really fucking good point that has yeah. pulled me out of some depressive holes. Yeah, I mean, it's true. That, man, my uh, now deceased father-in-law said the line that Bill Nye says uh, at uh, the wedding yeah. during the toast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During our, um, during our dance that we did. Mm-hmm. And you know, just like did some stuff over it. And I was like, man, that is just like, it's so, you know, just be kind. And you know, all this stuff It's like, man, that movie will follow you forever. 
I, got, I'm a li- I may watch it tonight. I know. I have to go home and watch It's a Wonderful Life because I started it last night and I can't. That's a great one. Yeah, it's a good one. That's literally a great movie. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a wonderful movie. Like, I feel like that movie is undersung. <laughs> and even though it's like one of the most even classic though, movies yeah. of all time. Even though, <laughs> even, though, even though it's like the most classic the most classic Christmas movie in the world. It's not a Christmas movie, though. You can't. It's, it's not Christmas. It's only Christmas at the very last scene. Right. But it's like... <laughs> When you when you really sink into that movie, you're just like, man, I'm, Whew. yeah, <laughs> I really do. Have a, this is wonderful. It thank is you, George. really a wonderful. Life. Thank you, George Bailey. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, Sid, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank man. you for having me, Miles. This is a fucking absolute blast. Uh, I'm uh, I'm so psyched for you for everything that I'm you're so doing right now. I'm so psyched for you, man. Thank you. You're I'm gonna sure. have the best time. Yeah. It's and you know, it's just it's gonna be incredible uh, and truly like. It is an like the word awesome. <laughs> yeah. It is an awesome experience yeah. to just be like, oh, there's a new being here now. Yeah. That's crazy. That rules. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This of is course. Um, uh, where can the people follow you, Sid? Uh, follow me on the internet at Sydney Raz, S I D N E Y R A Z or Z for your international followers. Very nice. Um, and yeah, I'm Sydney Raz everywhere Instagram, TikTok. Uh, Twitter, as long as we have it. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, just just follow me for things you wish you knew before you were in your 30s. And uh, as always, if you want to follow the show, it's at Perfect Tristan Pod. If you want to follow my silly little Instagram slash Twitter, it's at Miles Bond as well. Um, and here's something I didn't know until I was in my 30s. Perfection is only a call away. That was a HeadGum Podcast.